Good afternoon, sports fans, and welcome to the Monday edition. It is Monday. The weekend is over. Forget about it. It's in the rearview mirror. Did you have any of that ice cream downtown, that 3,000-foot Sunday? Well, if you didn't, you're not part of the world's record because I think that uh, when it's all said and done, it's going to be a world's record. It's going to be uh, – it had to be amazing. I was down at the L.C. Walk Arena calling the West Michigan Ironman football game and their uh, divisional championship game, which they won. So I will be traveling to Georgia this Saturday to cover the actual championship game. This is for all the marbles. It is Monday, June 13th, 2016. And I'd like to thank our sponsor, Easy Living Flooring. Spruce up your home and office with flooring from Easy Living. Check their large selection of carpet for residential and commercial. Choose from carpet, ceramic tile, laminate, and wood flooring. Free estimates, high-quality flooring at low, low prices. Easy Living Flooring has you covered. See Jerome and Lynn Kinzaki today. Easy Living Flooring on Wallace Lane behind McDonald's in Ludington. Give them a call at 843-1826. Boy, I tell you, that takes my breath away right there. I tell you, great sponsors every Monday and Friday. Great people, great products. Get over there and support them. Congratulations goes out to the Mace County Central Spartans boys baseball team as they won their regionals. They head to the state quarterfinals uh, tomorrow at T.C. Francis in Division Three, They'll take on Gladstone. Game two is Napoleon versus Gross Point Woods. Winners will move on to the state semifinals at Michigan State University on the 17th. That will be Thursday at 5 o'clock. And congratulations goes out to the Lady Chips softball team. Division Two regional winners. They move on to the quarterfinals, and they will also take on Gladstone on the same date, which is tomorrow. Uh, the winners, and we don't know who the second game opponents are going to be. We do know that Gross Point Woods is one. We're not sure who the other one is at this point. I don't know why. And if they get a bye, then they're going to play the winner of Manistee or Gladstone. Winners advance to the state semifinals at Michigan State University on Thursday the 17th at 12 o'clock. High noon for the state quarterfinals with a berth into the semis. And uh, congratulations to everybody. And as promised, as you were following on the County Line Sports Facebook page, and again, I'd like to thanks all, thank all the men and women of our armed forces that keep us free every single day. Thank you for all that you do uh, for this great country. You ready? Yes. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, Bailey Draper, she is uh, just uh, an all-around great person, great athlete. Uh, in and out of school, and uh, I've been talking to your mom. I'm Esther trying to get this, you know, all scheduled and get. You're so busy. I mean, if oh, it's yeah. not sports, it's been <laughs> it's been crazy. And we finally got you in studio. And first of all, you know, looking at everything that you've accomplished through uh, your your career, your life, and so forth. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. You're done with school. Oh, exciting. School. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're, you graduated hard school, which. Uh, uh, once a pirate, always a pirate, I guess. Yes. Is that pretty yep, cool? Definitely. Now, have you been in the heart area your whole life then? Um, for the most part, yeah, definitely. We grew up, when we were born, we were def uh, we came from Lowell area, and then we moved, I was about kindergarten, and then from there, heart has been Do you don't life. You don't remember much from... No, uh, not at all. So nope. everything pretty much is, is heart, yes. and it had to be pretty good memories all the way through. Yes, definitely. And now that you've graduated, uh, what is the next step for you? Because I see you've played a ton of sports. I mean, it looks like volleyball, team captain, you've done uh, softball, you've done basketball. I mean, what haven't you done? <laughs> football, I guess, football? is the only sport. <laughs> football. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, what are you going to be doing now? I am going to be going to Grace Bible. I'll be playing basketball for them. Definitely a dream come true. And then double majoring in biblical studies and environmental biology. That's awesome. And one of the things that I, I find uh, just, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, is, is your faith and the fact that uh, uh, it has carried you, you know, through life. And I'm sure it's going to mm -hmm. continue onward. And uh, to be studying in that, what exactly does that mean? Uh, the studies. Well, what will that do for you when you're done? Well, it's not just a study. It's definitely just my lifestyle. It's how I've grown up. Um, even though it's been what I've taught, it's what I am. And mm -hmm. so that's definitely a big thing. And now knowing that I will be able to incorporate that with everything I do from now on is it's just a big thing that, for me. That's neat. And do you think that that was one of the reasons, you know, why Grace said, hey, you know, on top of everything else you've done, uh, you know, uh, Grace Bible School, uh, they're going to bring you there and you're going to continue on, you know, with your life there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that was one of the drawing points for them? Um, I definitely hope so. Yeah. I believe so, yes. Yeah. So when when was the first time you knew that 
you were being watched by recruiters or someone that you were going to continue your career in one of your sports past, co- uh, past high school? Well, I've always dreamed of being able to play collegiate level. And that first time I saw a recruit sitting in the stands, it was just, I you, knew it was going to happen. Did you know that they were there? Um, I didn't know who they were until they came up and talked to me. It, I was, I don't know, it was amazing. But were you nervous from that point on, looking up in the stands, not seeing people you recognize, thinking, oh my gosh, they're watching me? Um, to be honest, not at all. Really? Cool. Not at all. <laughs> and uh, what was it like when they came up and introduced themselves to you? I mean, did, was it, uh, uh, were you nervous? Were you just kind of like, wow, me? Really? That's cool. <laughs> Well, my dream definitely came true, and so yeah. knowing that that was about to happen, it just helped. It definitely helped. And who was that that came out of stand? Was it Grace? Yeah, uh, Grace Bible, yes. And I tell you, they, uh, we were talking to your parents uh, and your brother here it just about what Grace is, and I'm telling you, athletic-wise, these guys are a juggernaut. Mm-hmm. Everything they do. The boys finish second in the, in the country, girls fourth, and I mean, and like your dad was saying, best recruiting classes this year. I mean, what it, it has to say a lot mm-hmm. because you're part of that group. Yeah, it's phenomenal to know that that's going to be it's going to be my life for the next four years, definitely. So. Yeah, and it's a young team because there's what three of you in this area that were uh, recruited by Grace, I believe. Yes, uh, for girls basketball, mm-hmm. and uh, we know that uh, the boys basketball team they've picked quite a few people from you know this area yeah. to play sports and basketball with them and. That is uh, that is real cool. And when you look at your schedule, you know, we were, again, we were talking uh, with your dad. You guys are going to be playing some pretty big-name Division II schools. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is going to be a true test. But, uh, you know, like Tom Izzo always does with Michigan State, he sits there and he plays the toughest teams first to see where his team is at, and they just get better through the year. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what their, uh, their mindset is because they don't lose many. And if they do, it's not, it's not a blowout. It's kind of – it's always a tough yeah, game. It's always, it, it mm-hmm. is. It is. And uh, what do you look forward to most uh, to getting started on the basketball team? Oh, there's so many things. I mean, the first practice, I'm sure, is going to be nerve-wracking. Oh, yeah. They're going to run us. I know that. Oh, yeah. And I'm oh, excited. Yeah. I'm excited. So. That's good. Now, <laughs> did you do track and field, too? Um, when I was in middle school. But when other than middle that, school. no. Well, your track and field team did pretty awesome again. Yes, I it mean, was amazing. Just, uh, well, what can you say ab- about Hart? You know, I- every school has peaks and valleys, and I think you guys are coming out of it, and it- and it's good to see. Yeah. And I think it's good for every high school in this er- in uh, this area to have that. And uh, looking at a lot of the stuff you've done, again, you know, to be an athlete, you take a lot of time to, uh, you know, to work out, to practice, to travel, to do everything you do, and you still find time to be on the National Honor Society. Mm-hmm. So again, that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, kind of walk me through a day, uh, one of your busiest days with sports, and how late is it? I mean, how early of a start do you get, and how late is your is your day? It wow, on a busy day, I could start as early as five in the morning, with Whew. depending if we're traveling somewhere, mm-hmm. uh, bus rides, maybe a two hour bus ride in certain times, and then playing for the entire day or. <laughs> sitting around waiting for a game and then you know going out and playing after especially for volleyball that was a big thing and then wow not getting home till 10 30 11 at night how do you do all the books how do you do uh all the i mean national honor society that's just not something that's just given away you have to earn that and, and that's that's something that's learned at an early age is you know uh responsibility you know do the homework understand what you're doing uh how do you find time to do all that Late nights. Late, <laughs> Late nights. <laughs> it's called dedication. And yes. You, and you have that, you know, and the lack of sleep, you know, for the past, I don't know how many years, you know, definitely you're rewarded yeah. by it. So I think that that is something neat. I wish I could have done a little bit better. Um, you've done a lot of volunteer work. Uh, you've given blood, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is, uh, again, I think that's amazing because it saves lives. And again, I think that kind of goes back to uh, your faith. You know, I think, you know, giving and helping, I think that's part of it. Um, you donate your hair for locks of love, and I think that's amazing. I work with the uh, Relay for Life every year. Um, my uh, best friend, uh, she's a breast cancer survivor twice. Uh, my mom had cancer. So, I mean, I know that that's really cool what you do. And uh, it has to feel good that, you know, y- you grow your hair out, you cut it, but you know it's going to, to a good cause. Mm-hmm. How long have you been part of that? All my life, I've donated probably five times. And How do you do that? Because I can barely <laughs> get my hair to grow. How do you get it to grow so long? I have no <laughs> idea. 
Oh, that's crazy. But that, I mean, that that is that is something that, you know, I don't I don't think you had to be told to do it. I think you did it because mm-hmm. you, you know you genuinely care, and I think that's what separates people. Uh, you went on mission trips. You know, where did you go for them? Well. My favorite would definitely be Montana. We went there and we helped rebuild this summer camp. And just, it was so beautiful out there. If you ever get a chance, definitely go out there. I but think they call that big sky country. Yeah. I think it is. And I it fu- definitely is. I it's flew amazing. over it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just beautiful. And uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, we could talk about the next five days about everything you've done. <laughs> uh, but I, I just find this just, uh, I'm in awe when I look at, at this and, uh, I, I just think it's pretty cool that you've done so much. I mean, you volunteer to come back and help. Uh, did you play volleyball too? Yes. And I think that's really cool because it says here you, you volunteered to give back to the kids, you know, to make sure that they understand, you know, your hard work and dedication and what it's going to take for them to get to that point. And I think that's cool because I think the numbers have been struggling a little bit down in heart. Mm-hmm. And I think with you doing that and, and other kids stopping in saying, hey, you know, this is what you could be. I think that's helping. And do you think that helps recruit the kids? I mean, do you see a, a, a difference in their faces after you're done talking to them? Oh, d- definitely. It's amazing. After a game, like kids from third grade, they'll come up and they'll give you a hug. They'll be a like, good job. That's not only knowing that's going to grow the program, but it just puts a smile on your face and you know that things are going to get better. I think that's cool. Uh, I don't even know where to go from here. Um, the Presidential Education Award, I mean, you've done so much. You were on WZZM 13. Uh, you've, I mean, scholar athlete in basketball, volleyball, and softball all your – I mean, it, it just – and, it's, again, this is something that's not handed out. This is earned. And the fact that you were um, given this award uh, it takes a lot of hard work to get to that point. And I'm pretty sure when you do get those awards, um, uh, I've listened – before and you're very humbled by everything you're not just like yeah i i know i am the best there's <laughs> nobody that could be any better than me uh you know that you still have time to learn you know that you still can get better at what you do and i think that's what uh uh separates you know uh, again i could look at like lebron and he just sickens me at how <laughs> hockey he is basically and um you sit here you're very humbled you know and you know that uh this does the talking for you and I think that's pretty neat. You don't have to do it. You mm-hmm. just, you know, it, this is this is really neat to see. Um, let's see. What was your favorite sport playing uh, when you're growing up? Basically, when did you start? Because I think that's where we probably should go uh, from here. When did you get? When did you first start playing? And what what sport do you remember it was? I would have to be, say it was between softball and well, at the time, t-ball, but t-ball. and basketball. What's so. your favorite sport? Basketball, for sure. It is basketball. Yes. Are, are you are you saying that because you don't want to uh, say anything about the other sports, or are you? Do you think basketball is y- your prime sport? No, basketball is my life. It's did you like volleyball? Yes, I How did. How about softball? Yes. How did you do in softball? Well, I've grown w- up with it all my life, and so cool. Cool. it's just a th- yeah. I couldn't hit one of them things. <laughs> I've tried. I was I was in the Navy, and we uh, we had slow pitch, and we did a lot of that stuff. And uh, I thought it was really uh, interesting when I came here and did the fast pitch stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I can't do this. And uh, I just find it uh, pretty interesting. I mean, you guys uh, have done some great things. I know you've done some um, – some things that I know that uh, when you put stuff on a pedestal, you put this higher than most things, and one of them, uh, you're able to beat the Shelby Tigers. Yeah. I had to feel pretty good. It definitely did. I think your mom was saying 20 years or something. Yeah. It was, it was, yep. yeah, that's a long uh, dry spell. Mm-hmm. And what was it like to finally get that W? I mean, it's a rivalry that's gone back forever. Um, but it's been a struggle, you know, for the Pirates, you know, as of late. And to get in the win column, how much did that mean to you guys? <laughs> There's no words to describe it. It was definitely the best feeling, knowing that we were the class that helped lead there. And uh, they've definitely, Shelby definitely fought for it mm-hmm. and it made it that much better. Yeah. But it was amazing. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that, that's kind of historic. I mean, when you look <laughs> at it, I mean, 20-year drought, I mean... Uh, 
I'm a Cubs fan, so I've been suffering for a <laughs> long time. So uh, to get that first win had to feel pretty good. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's one of the things you, you look back on is uh, it, that's your Super Bowl, you know, yeah. is, is against them, you know, and uh, to get that win had to be. And then you didn't just win one. I believe you won, what, three or four in a row now? Three? Three. We had two last year and then one this year. Yeah, so. and didn't you play them in districts too? No, maybe sure. last year. I'm so. trying. I'm trying to remember what that was, uh, but still, amazing. And again, the Heart Pirates. Uh, you better look out because they're definitely going to do some great things. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're a musician. Yes. Which I think is cool because <laughs> I've tried different uh, instruments in my life. I tried drums. I tried cornet. I tried tuba. Which, <laughs> if I ever showed you my sixth grade picture, you'd laugh because the tuba was bigger than I was. Um, I, I just, I, I just, uh, I love music. I just can't play it. Uh, what do you play? I play the alto sax. So now, what, what's, what is the alto sax? I mean, if somebody was to see, um, I saw um, Bob Seger, and I know one of their uh, their guys plays a saxophone. I'm not sure what kind it is. What's the difference? Because I know there's huge saxophones and there's <laughs> small ones. And what is the uh, alto sax? It, it's one of the smaller ones. It's. Um, if you can play one, you can play them all. You can. Yes. And what? So. What? Uh, um, how long you been playing that? Since sixth grade. So. So you're pretty good yeah. at it. What's your favorite uh, song? Oh, favorite song. <laughs> there has to be one. <laughs> Two. Not that I can. Maybe think three. Of. Not that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest platform you ever played on uh, with uh, with the band? Um, when our senior band went to state, that was probably or just parades that we do that's always fun too those are so hot aren't they oh my goodness i mean i was down at the asparagus festival and i was watching the shelby band walking down the street and i'm just like oh they have to feel miserable oh i give them more credit (sighs) like oh i (laughs) i couldn't do that i I mean that's a long walk it is and with all that equipment that they're carrying and so forth uh we're gonna take a quick break and we come back we'll have more with Bailey Draper, right after this, right here on County Line Sports. Welcome back to County Line Sports. I'm your host, Bill Downing. It is Monday, June 13th, 2016, and we continue our live and studio interview with Bailey Draper. And I kind of wanted to ask you, uh, you were in band, but were you also, is it band? It says jazz band, too. Was it separate? Was it two different, you know, things, or was it just one? Yeah, jazz band was zero hours, so before school, it was... Again, and early morning? Yes. She's oh, Pete's. That had to be pretty cool. So the jazz band, again, I like jazz. I think it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, when I was in the service, we had a chance to go to New Orleans. I heard jazz for the first time, and I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, do, you, do you prefer that over just regular band? I Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love yeah. that kind of. That beat is just, uh, yep. yeah. And the saxophone plays a big role mm-hmm. uh, in, in jazz band. I think that's cool. Um, what is FFA? You were the vice president and uh, the green hand degree. You traveled to a state competition. Uh, what is FFA? It, trying to, it used to be uh, the Future Farmers of America. Yeah, okay. But now okay. they kind of, it's more of agricultural education, just kind of teaching students about education, like, or agricultural stuff and just kind of making world better with things like that and so go green type thing you know yeah. try not to put the chemicals in there and uh the organic way of doing it. what's your favorite uh agriculture now my my stepbrothers and stepsisters grew up in iowa so they were part of the ffa back then and uh they were doing pigs and cows mm-hmm. i believe and how to uh um you know not have all the pesticides and the chemicals and stuff you know how to feed them uh, you know, off the land instead of having all these preservatives and stuff that you get in the store, you know, how to do it the right way. Is that something that you do? What do you mean? Well, by... they, they basically, instead of throwing chemicals down, it's more organic. And it was, they were trying to, to learn how to um, not have kids grow up eating stuff that's not pure, mm-hmm. you know, stuff that, uh, you know, if the land provides it, you should eat it, that type thing. Uh, you know, the, the whole, uh, uh, I don't know, the 
uh, where they put uh, like steroids and stuff in foods to make stronger chickens or whatever, you know, uh, just the base agriculture of just trying to do things the right way. Well, they do teach a lot of that stuff now. Like we're trying to feed such a big world that they use that stuff. I don't always agree with it. Mm -hmm. And they use a thing that they use is GMO. So genetically modified, um, so foods like that and yeah. stuff. And I don't always believe, I don't think that's right that you should be altering it. Like you said, that's what I was trying exactly. to spit out. And yes. I couldn't. Yeah, but exactly. they teach a lot of times it's taught that it, it, um, we're trying to grow the economy since the population is so much bigger that, mm -hmm. So that's a big They're, thing. Are they trying to find ways to double what we have because our population basically is doubled mm -hmm. and our land resources are, seems like they're dwindling. Um, we're having more issues with droughts, uh, farmers struggling, uh, floods, um, just natural disasters, kind of, uh, you know, fields going to waste every year. You drive by and you see these fields and you're like, why are they not being utilized? You know, mm -hmm. uh, is that something that concerns you? Um, yeah, definitely. And since, the, you know, since the population is growing, we have less farmland. And so they're trying to find ways to farm with less land. And I know my so. aunt back in Iowa, she has four fields. And every year um, she's basically told not to farm two of them. Mm -hmm. and, I yeah. don't, and we don't know why. And uh, we don't ask. Uh, but, uh, you know, the two fields she does do, it usually goes between soybeans and corn and so forth. But, uh, you know, it just seems like they could be doing a lot more. And I think the FFA is, is there to try to kind of push them mm -hmm. in the right directions, open up some of these um, candidates that are running our, our states and our countries, uh, trying to tell them, hey, there is a better way. We need to utilize more because uh, we're running out of space, you know. And we have enough food, it seems like. But again, you talk about the GMO, which uh, that's what I was trying to spit out earlier. Uh, that's basically where they uh, they double the food. They try to make mm -hmm. you know, more make of it. Make it bigger. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's not what I think what farming originally was. It was we eat what we grow, you know, and, and that's why they work long, long hours. I mean, my aunt, geez, I couldn't tell you how many hours she's out there. Uh, and she's chomping at the bit in the wintertime for that snow to melt so she can get, you know, out in the fields and stuff like that and do things the right way. I think that is uh, uh, that is really cool. Um, let's see. You want to be debt free. Oh, yes. yes. I, I, I see that. And I think we all do. And if you find the cure for that, can you please let me know? <laughs> I will. Just got to ask Dave Ramsey. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you'd say that because... Uh, I have listened to him, and he's got mm -hmm. a lot of great ideas. And, but the thing is, you can't just go a week and say, oh, I've done it. This mm. is a long process. It's a lifetime. Process. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like the stock market. You can't just go five weeks and say, oh, I've lost money. I'm done. Or if I gain money and I'm out. You know, it's a long, you're in it for the long haul. And I think that is kind of a, uh, a neat deal. Now, it says here you were team captains. Yes. Uh, for which sport? For softball and volleyball. And who picked you to do that? Was it your peers? Was it the coach? I'm not sure. I believe it's both. So How did it make you feel? I had to feel, feel pretty good to say, yeah. you know, I'm um, pretty much respected. And I think that goes back long before you were picked as a captain. Mm -hmm. I think they look at it not just at that time, but they look at what you've done in the past and say, you know what, this is, this is she earned us. You know, I had to feel pretty good. Yeah. Now, being the team captain and so forth, what responsibilities did you have? Um, just to be a leader, not necessarily like a boss telling people, but to be able to learn from them and learn with them. Did you ever have people come up to you and say, hey, you know, Bailey, I, I, I don't know. I'm, you're a, a junior or a senior. I'm a freshman, a sophomore. You know, how, how'd you do it? You know, how, did you ever have to kind of give somebody that, you know, a little uh, jump start and say, hey, if I could do it, you can do it. This is what you need to do. I actually I have. And one comes to mind from our softball team this year. And she has taught me so many things, and she probably doesn't know it, but she always came up to me. She's always asking questions, and I appreciate it. I definitely do. Now, your coaches throughout the years. I yeah. mean, you've had, you've had some great coaches. I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you who your favorite one was, <laughs> but what was one of the things that you remember from any of your coaches that you can pull back, and when you go to grace, you say, you know what, I could utilize what I learned from this person to you know to integrate into your uh to your college career well i would say they pushed us they never let us quit and even when we want to they wouldn't let us maybe it's a typical answer you hear but mm -hmm. it's definitely 
it was a big help to have that, and I know it's going to carry over into college. Well, let me ask you this. When you, you have a program that wins and wins and wins and wins, uh, it's pretty easy to kind of go through life and say, you know, we're pretty darn good. But when you're in a situation where maybe you're not winning all the time, and we talked about the struggles Hart has had, and mm -hmm. I think they're definitely on the right path now, and it started with, uh, with your class and the class before. I think you guys are in the right direction. How hard is it to keep going when – you look in the win-loss column, and it's like, ugh, not much wins and ugh, a lot of losses, but we still need to push ourselves to every game. How hard is that? It's tough. It really is. But when you look at it and you see how far you've grown, it's it was worth it, especially during basketball season. Um, our team was just dedicated. We saw things. We were told we wouldn't get anywhere, and we proved them wrong, and that felt so good, and it was worth it. I hate when people say oh, that. You yeah, know, oh, yeah. Oh, it's hard coming in. It's a guaranteed win. Oh, yeah. And we've heard that plenty of times. I'm sure. And uh, how, yeah. when you hear the hecklers out there and people saying that, do you think about it at all? Or is it just in one ear out the other and you go out there and you play even harder? Personally, it's in one ear out the other. It just it pushes us. And I know this year for softball, when our team came around, people were talking about it. Or any All of our sports and it was i know montague for softball this year they i heard a rumor that they were talking wow it hearts here we do need to be ready this time and that felt good felt really good i don't like that and that's you know to be honest <laughs> with you i believe and again if coaches are listening sorry to say this but i think it starts with the coaches they need to tell their kids hey listen every game you know you're no better than the other team that's out there and so forth but when it gets to the point where the kids start saying that I think somebody needs to step in, and I think that's what's really neat because there's a lot of respect going around this area uh, with the Hart Pirates. You know, even during the losing streaks, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that said, wow, you know, those kids are pretty darn special. Uh, to stay in a program that when they're struggling and to do what they're doing and see the same names year after year, you know, means that they're trying. And I think that's, uh, that's neat because when you pull away, you know, I was talking to Rocky Smith, as a matter of fact, you know, all the times that he has had uh, wrestlers, you know, and they go out after a meet and, and you guys got a great program, keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got to carry a lot of weight, yes. knowing that win or lose, people out there respect you guys. That's, that's great to hear. Well, in sports, I mean, yeah. it's all about respect, I think, mm -hmm. you know, yes. it's, there's a winner and there's a loser. There's never a tie in, unless you in soccer and. You do kind of like the, M, uh, the MLS, and we play to a draw. I know, we, I know, we don't in high school sports, correct? In soccer, it's you play till you win, right? Yeah, or I'm or not shootout sure. I'm or not, something. I'm not a soccer player. I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> That's a good question. I should, I should, I, yeah, you're right. I should, I should know that, and I don't. Um, but I think that's neat. You know, you, you play whistle to whistle and uh, pitch to pitch, and I think that uh, yeah. that shows a lot. Now, in order to get to this point, you're surrounded by great people. And it includes your family, mm -hmm. and it includes your coaches, and includes the volunteers that have done this for years and years to get you from point A to point B, the laundry, the food, get you up when you didn't want to wake up, I'm sure. And, oh, yeah. Um, you had to eat breakfast because that's the most important meal of the mm -hmm. day and that kind of stuff. How important have your parents been to you uh, from day one to get you to this point? Because I know it's your hard work, but they also had a lot to do with it, too. They... Everything it has. They had to do everything with it. They pushed me when, yeah, when I didn't want to wake up in the mornings. My mom was there. <laughs> yeah. You need to get up. And my dad on the court. You, he would just always be there, telling me, helping me with things like small things. After games, he would coach me through a couple things, and I'd use it the next game. And that, they were my number one supporters, and it you was know, amazing. The, the travel times, the yes. laundry, the food. I mean, <laughs> yes. uh, countless, uh, you know, and uh, social media now because I know for a fact that uh, the updates, they come in. I mean, uh, as soon as the game's over, boom, I, mm -hmm. I get a message. I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know, and uh, – I just think I just think it's neat, you know. This whole thing, uh, your family from day one has been there for you. Your coaches, uh, the volunteers. Uh, have you ever been hurt during your uh, high school career? 
No ankles, not that no I knees, n- knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, not that I can think of. Yeah, because, I mean, I've talked to a couple athletes that have had some pretty devastating injuries, but they never quit. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it led back to, again, what we talked at the very first thing was their faith. They says, listen, you know, everything happens for a reason. I am going to bounce back, you know, and they tw- and they try twice as hard to come back at yeah, it. Yeah, so much respect uh, for them, too. Yeah, you, I mean, because it's so easy to give up. You could, yeah. you know, and just throw your dreams away, you know. Um, so... You're going off to Grace Bible School. You're going to play sports, four-year uh, college, correct? Yes. Okay, and then after that, uh, where do you want to go with your degree? I, I'm i open right now, open book, um, just wherever God leads me to go. So now, would that possibly mean back here it could. to heart? It could, definitely. What do you ever think about coming back, maybe coaching? I'm definitely not the coaching type. Um, you may say that now. M- yeah. But... You know, some of these coaches <laughs> have probably said that in the past, and I can't do that, and look where they are today. Yeah, true. I think that would be cool if you came back to the program. And, I mean, you already give back already. You volunteer, and uh, I think that would be kind of neat, you know, to come back to this area. But wherever the road takes you, yeah. all I can say is uh, congratulations. We wish you, you the very, very best. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been easy, uh, but your hard work has kind of made it look easy. Mm-hmm. You, you've done a lot of great things in a very short period of time. And uh, we couldn't be more proud of you here. I'm glad to finally get you on the air. And uh, everybody out there that's listening, um, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, they, they really they like following you and your story. I think it's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just, this whole thing is just amazing to be able to do this. And then quite a ride, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you ever think it would get to this point? Um, not at all. Nope. No. And all the hard work has paid off. Yeah. So now you can get some sleep. Well, yeah, maybe. I've got maybe. four more years, you know. Well, yeah, you got Gus Macker this coming oh, yeah. the weekend. But, I mean, y- y- you can get some sleep now. You don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> and stuff. Now, do you do do you do you any – are you working right now? Um, not yet, but later in the summer I will be. Uh, where is that going to be? I'll be just working around Silver Lake. That's um, cool. Helping well, I was just down there this last weekend. Yeah. That, that's – that place is busy. It's my hometown. It's where I live. Really? I love it, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I was down there. We went on the dune rides, of course. Oh, yeah. Know. Had to play the tourist route, you know. I had oh, to do yeah. That. And, uh, yeah. you know, I just think that's really neat. Uh, it, it is a, that's a great place to go. It's uh, it's amazing. I, have, I love yeah, it. I, I can't get my kid out of there when she does go. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of like, Dad, I'm like, no, we're leaving. We're, we're done. <laughs> we, no more mini golf. No more bumper boats. We're done. <laughs> yeah. and no more T-shirts. I can't do it. But uh, <laughs> congratulations, you know, Bailey. I think uh, this is a great story. Again, you, you've done a lot of things. You've been a scholar athlete. I think you were chosen for the – uh, Lens Balder Insurance uh, Student Athlete of the mm-hmm. Month, I believe, too. That was l- last year, I believe. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to get that, you know, mm-hmm. these awards. And uh, uh, keep it up. Keep up the hard work. Well, and, thank uh, you. Well, we didn't. We don't want to leave out your brother. I'm sure he's had oh. an intricate <laughs> part, too, of uh, uh, what's going on in your life, too, huh? Yeah, definitely. What, what is he? Does he push you? Does he tell you to keep going? or? He's there to make sure that... I'm always on my toes, <laughs> definitely. Oh, that's pretty cool. And, again, uh, I appreciate everything you do, your family mm-hmm. and everything, and what you've done for uh, the Heart Pirates Athletics. And uh, it's a pretty cool story. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you do get to school and you guys succeed and win a national championship, don't mm-hmm. forget about us and oh, make sure you come back on I the will show. be back. I will be back. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Bailey, we thank you for your time and your thank parents you. and your brother yeah. and everything. And uh, uh, keep up the good work, and uh, we'll talk to you in the near future. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. All right. We'll be right back with more County Line Sports right after this.